This is my home built milling machine, CNC milling machine, and it's built mostly out of scrap materials, leftover things, secondhand parts, and things that I've collected up over the years. Cheap or free is the name of the game. It's filled with sand and it's a fully welded steel frame. And it has been busy over the last few weeks making some actual parts. Uh, it's had a few upgrades and it's been chomping through metal. Mostly aluminium, but it did do some cast iron, some steel, and quite a bit of Delrin. And just before I show you the parts, uh, I would invite you to lower your expectations. I'm just kidding. They came out pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm really actually quite impressed. It's obviously not Titans of CNC standard, but this machine cost me less to build than probably one of the linear rails inside a real machine. So considering that fact, the tolerances are actually pretty decent. And yes, I know these parts probably could have been made with a machine a quarter of this size, but you know, it can do steel, it's pretty quiet, and yeah, I think it's worked really well. It's been a good way to experiment with feeds and speeds and various milling strategies to remove material, and also what the machine is capable of. And in the end, it's made some pretty awesome parts. If you want to see some progress that I've done on the mill, some upgrades and some future plans, then stick around. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed the video. <laughs>
this actually maximizes the workable area uh, not only can the flood cooling enclosure be like really massive but the head can reach you know all the way from like here to here so you know a much bigger work envelope the only problem is when the head is when the spindle is really far down there's a lot of unsupported overhang here so that is what is worrying me about the rigidity uh, I don't want to reduce the rigidity of the machine having spent all this effort building such a strong and uh, damped frame so I'm thinking as a way to mitigate that I would place a linear rail at the back here instead of here and then have a, a ra sort of a wrap around plate so the bearing blocks are here and here and here and here and then having a uh, sort of a, a channel shape like I do here to minimize this twisting on the metal so yeah this is the second thought this is kind of what I'm leaning towards but again let me know your thoughts I'm quite interested to hear what you think so jumping back in time a little bit and uh, talking more about the upgrades that I've done to the machine uh, this was my original spindle motor setup it was a treadmill motor and it was actually a source of quite a lot of vibration it wasn't really balanced for running as fast as I need it had a lot of torque which was nice but it was really loud because it was air cooled and running it overnight really wasn't an option here where I live with neighbors next door it was rated for about 5000 rpm but actually at that rpm it it was beginning to vibrate quite a lot and because of the reduction with the belt the spindle would only see 3000 or so rpm which wasn't really enough so in search for more rpm i decided to pinch this cheap 1.5 kilowatt spindle from an old cnc project that wasn't getting much use and i thought hey why don't we try and stick a pulley on here instead of an er collet so i decided to turn a little bit of aluminium I created a custom form tool just with a scribed uh, line for the 30 degrees on top of a broken tap which actually I had trouble holding in my tool holder in my tool post so I then uh, used a, a piece of HSS bar with the same uh, 30 degree profile and with a couple of dial indicators uh, I just did one groove at a time going back checking that they are exactly 2.35 I think uh, millimeters apart and that the depth is correct and after all of that the belt fit perfectly I bought it to about 10 microns under size I think and then I just used a tiny little grub screw just to locate on on the flat of the shaft and then after freezing the uh, freezing the entire spindle, which I'm not sure was a good idea, but hey, it still works. Uh, chucked it into my milling vise, heated up the uh, the pulley, and used the z-axis to actually press it in. It found it very easy, so I think it was just like a very, very, very slight thermal slight interference fit. And uh, as of two weeks later, I still don't have any problems. I installed it into my original belt setup which had this idler bearing but it was getting noisy and actually that arm was just another source of vibration so I then redesigned the tensioning system to have this push rod on a swinging kind of motor mount. My previous drawbar was actually just M12 stud with a stud connector which was quite wobbly up the top so I welded that and stuck in the lathe and really balanced now there's no vibration coming from the spindle area anymore. And now I can get 5,000 RPMs at the spindle, which is yeah about 10,000 RPMs at the uh, at the motor. I'm also using the cheap ubiquitous Huanyang VFD, which has a uh, Mark III plug-in. So it's amazing. I can start it, stop it. I can uh, trigger the e-stop, and actually it's uh, it's not very loud at all. So yeah, I can run jobs overnight now. So I hope you found this video informative and maybe entertaining. Uh, thanks for watching. Can't wait to hear your comments.